What's up, Cap? You want me to pull the finger? Okay, hold on. Oh, not cool, Cap. Not cool. <laughs> Tonight on MCE. Captain America. What's up my fellow geeky friends and welcome to another review. Today we have the legendary beast in XM Studios one third scale Captain America statue. If this is your first time on the channel, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you can catch up on all of our collectible content. So Captain America, the first Avenger, the iconic hero of World War II and the enemy of all injustices, both foreign and domestic. I have to say this is one fantastic piece, really. It has a great presence and embodies patriotism and justice. It's not without flaws though, and I'll get to that in a second, but you have to marvel at his presence when you see it for the first time. For a long time now, we have been getting a ton of one-third scale statues from DC characters and Batman, and well, more Batman, but Marvel has been more or less silent in this size of statue. But what a great way to kick it off with Captain America, right? I mean, I could have gone with Iron Man myself, but I'll take this. XM Studios handled distribution on this piece, so it comes in the XM Studios style box with the hard case and the straps that we've all come to expect. It also comes with an instruction manual for the build, but honestly, you don't need them. This is a very easy statue to put together. The only thing I didn't see in the box was an art print, which I've come to expect now when I get an XM Studios piece. So that was a little bit disappointing. Everything was packaged nice and neat and secure, so that's really good. You get two swap out torsos, two heads, a right and a left arm holding the shield, a right and a left arm not holding the shield, a shield mounted on the back, and a star to cover up the hole when you don't have the shield on the back. And finally, you get an arm with a hand pointing a finger. So you get a ton of switch out parts. Assembly, like I said, was extremely easy. If you can't figure this out, then there's some bigger issues you may want to address. So I'm going to kick this off with the one thing that is bugging me about this piece. When I first pulled it out of the box and assembled it, I immediately felt like something was off. I feel like the proportions of the upper torso and the arm length seem disproportionate. I felt this way so much that I grabbed tape measure and I started to check it out. It's all in proportion by measurements, but still I felt weird when I look at it dead on with Captain America at my eye level. So I started to switch out parts and took some pictures and really looked it over. And the funny thing that I noticed is, depending on the viewing angle, the proportions looked better, especially when I'm sitting down and looking up at it. Then I took a look at the base with the eagle head that looks kind of like it's part of a skyscraper. And I think that maybe the idea is to display him higher up than I would normally display a one third scale piece. I felt the same way about the Batman Hush when I first got it. He doesn't really look good at a low level or at eye level. You gotta keep him raised up It's because it looks like he's on top of a building. So anyway, I'm curious to hear what you all think about it. Do you feel the same way about it? Especially those of you guys who have purchased it and now own it. What do you guys think about the proportions? But that's really it. That's the only thing that really stood out to me as off. But everything else I like very much. Cap sits atop what looks like a skyscraper eagle head. Kind of like what I would have seen on the Chrysler building in New York. To me, it gives this piece kind of a wartime propaganda kind of feel to it. I love the stars that roll around the very bottom, the brick facade on the floor that meets the eagle, and the bronze color of it all. It just gives a historic feel in my opinion. Captain America is highly detailed, maybe overly, especially in the leathery areas on the boots and the gloves. It doesn't bother me, I still like it, but I think that it could have been toned down a few notches. I like all the little details they added, like the star button on the boots, the tie laces look realistic, and the bottoms give off that combat feel. The blue pants have a contrasting texture to the red leather areas, and they feature stitching and other areas of folds that look on point. And of course, you get America's ass. 
Although he could spend a little more time working out those glutes. They did a great job on the belt with the detailed pouches and the useful gear like the flask. It would have been cool if they had a World War II gun, but I don't think they were going specifically for Captain America during the war. The torso is split where the blue chest area meets the red and white parts of the ab and lower back section, which I think was a great idea. That means there's no seams visible anywhere on this piece. I like what they did with the texturing and the color in the red and white areas of the abs and the lower back especially. They're subtle in texture and they're dirty kind of, so the white isn't very, very white. It looks like he's actually washed this thing a few times after battles. And as I stated earlier, you get two upper chest areas featuring the classic comic suit with the overlapping plates. With the two torsos, you get a museum iconic pose, which I can picture with an American flag flowing behind him, and you get a pointing finger pose like the Uncle Sam wants you kind of look. Now, I really thought that I would like the pointing finger pose more, but now that I'm seeing it in person, I'm not feeling it as much. For one, you can only use the modern head portrait with that pose, as the classic head makes him look like he's checking out Peggy Carter and not paying attention to the cameraman. And secondly, you cannot use any other left arm options other than the one holding the shield. So you really only get this one look. With the classic museum pose though, you can display the shield in the left or the right arms, you can display it on his back, and you can use either portrait. So you get a bit more versatility with this look. I personally like the classic head looking up and the shield in either hand. Both portraits look fantastic though. The skin tone is on point. It's got some subtle texturing in the skin which contrasts it from the helmet. The wrinkles in the eyes look very good. The helmets are slightly different color and shade than the blue in the suit, which I'm assuming they did this to designate a different material for the helmet, but that's something that you really gotta look at to see. I would have liked to have seen an unmasked portrait and then maybe an arm holding the helmet in the hand. I think that would have been a real nice addition to it. And now that I'm looking at it, I think that instead of the pointing finger pose, him saluting or holding the American flag I think would have been an even better option. Lastly, the shields look accurate, but I think they could use a little more weathering to punch it up a notch. There's some subtle weathering in it, but it's really subtle. It looks almost clean. So that's it. Overall, I like this statue a lot. It's a solid piece and an awesome centerpiece for your Captain America collection. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this piece? Let me know in the comments. And have you guys been checking out my other statue reviews? Last week, I just released the XM Studios Cyclops statue review. So give it a watch and let me know what you think. Thanks for hanging out with me to the end of this video. And as always, keep it marvelous.